Here is a game I played yesterday on GoQuest that I am pretty proud of. Uh, I am white, playing against a stronger player. And we have the black boomerang opening. Lately I've been playing a lot of this variation as white, where you go for the Atari and Tiger's Mouth. I made a whole video about this, uh, where I showed one variation here which is kind of interesting, where if black just connects and goes into this endgame, which is some pretty natural moves. Uh, then there is only one way for black to keep this endgame a draw, which is to find this hanging connection. Uh, so I'll link the video if you wanna, want to watch that analysis in more detail, but I've been going for this as white, thinking that if black goes for this and cannot find that uh, hanging connection, which is kind of tricky, then um, I have good chances of winning as white. But of course black also has other options, so in this game black just went for this 3-3 invasion, uh, which is objectively a little bit worse, but you know, it's not easy to punish. So I block from this direction. This is a good shape to block with. There's no good shape for black here to extend, since black runs into this Han at the head of two stones, and this is just very uncomfortable. So instead black peeps. Uh, I don't want to connect submissively, because black connecting here, black is kind of a little bit too comfortable in this corner. So instead I push down here and cut off this one stone. But this allows black to cut here, and I sort of played these moves on, on feeling, I didn't really read out this far, I didn't have a plan here, so here I had to stop and think. Um, and you can do too, uh, pause the video here and try to find the correct continuation for, for white from this position. It would not be a good idea to connect uh, e5, because black can make good shape with the stones inside, and now white will be in trouble on uh, either one of the sides. So if white plays from this side, black can extend this stone, and we can see either black captures this or this. And if white fixes this side, then these stones are dying instead. So I saw I couldn't allow that, so instead I went for a connection underneath with e2. You know, if black just immediately captures, then I'm happy to connect, but black can go in a bit further, and it's not really clear that I will be able to connect underneath, so I was pretty nervous um, in the game. I had kind of read it out, but I wasn't sure if it was any good. So I have to keep Atari. Still, if I connect now, black will just Atari and jump. I die. So I have to keep playing Atari and Atari and Atari, and only now is the time when black cannot keep extending, because then I would kill everything. So at the last possible moment, black captures, I get to connect underneath on the first line. So the reason I wasn't sure if this is good, you know, sometimes when you do this, you get a lot of weaknesses and maybe you lost a lot of territory. In this case, though, it is good for white. Uh, black has to come back and, and save in Koti here. I don't have any severe weaknesses and uh, white is actually doing okay on points. So now I only have to decide between uh, playing the end game on the left and the right. I think both are actually fine. Um, I chose the left one, I thought it was a little bit simpler. Um, and I did kind of read out the game to the end here and saw that I had enough points, but I made some mistakes in my reading. So let me first show you what I thought would happen. I thought if black just harness and then plays Atari and goes down here, then I will get Hane connect in center. And then I get this one, and usually black has to back off here. And here I saw that I had more than enough points to win. But this was optimistic in a few ways. Um, first of all, in this position, black may be able to hunt here actually. We'll get more into that later. But also, this Atari is kind of obviously not the best move. It's better to play here. And then black has this Hane. Uh, so I missed this for some reason. I thought this would be yeah, equivalent to... I know this wasn't the best move, but I thought this would be... I just made some sort of oversight. <laughs> Um, so in the game I played here, black immediately jumped, and I thought, okay, I can just respond. I saw no matter how black plays, I will be ahead. But then when black plays this move, I realized, oh, it's a little bit closer than I thought. Uh, because now I lo no longer get the j5 on it. Uh, but still, if I can get the... Uh, so, okay, let's see. First I do all of this in center, of course. If I still can get the a7 on it, and black has to back off the b8, then I'm still okay. Um, maybe I should take this time to share a trick here to um, how you can quickly count this position. Um, so you can, in area scoring, if the board is approximately divided in, in half, it can be a good help to draw a line across the center of the board 
and then count the number of black stones across that line, uh, sort of across the, the half line. So black has, in this case, um, six stones across the line. We want to count, count our live stones, of course. And then for white, we count both the stones across, but also um, the territory and stones on the line. So we count all of this. So now uh, white has eight here, black has six. If white has one more than black, then it's a draw. And if white has more than one more, then it's a win for white. So that may seem a little bit complicated, but it's actually, it's pretty quick when you get used to it. Uh, so that's how I could pretty quickly know that this would be enough. Um, but that's actually also why in this position black knew that, okay, I can't allow that, I have to go for uh, the Han here. And now if white connects, then it would be a draw instead. So, um, I will go for this co here, of course. Uh, I will cut, black will capture, and we are going to have a co. Um, I should mention that black played the h7 move. Uh, it would have been a bit stronger to play h6 to minimize the co threats. Let's go back and look at that in a moment. Uh, first, let me just show you what happened in the game. Uh, black actually at this time played this Atari, which is a mistake. Uh, I took the co once, then responded to one co threat, but then I can just connect and there's no co anymore. Uh, I can just play Atari from this side. So actually black should have played uh, this Atari and, and now it's a real co. Um, so let's actually take a look. Let's see if black had played this one and then this Hane, so now there are fewer co threats. Uh, it would have been quite an interesting continuation because now I actually can't afford to respond to this co threat. If I respond, then I don't have any co threat and uh, now black is actually winning here because I actually can't even win the, the a7 co. Um, so that would be bad. Um, but in this position white would still be winning because I can ignore this threat. Just play on top, this is bigger. And then, yeah, white is winning here. But there's a good chance I would have missed this in the game. So this would may maybe have been a stronger way for black to play. Uh, okay, back to the game variation. I played this one. And uh, let's see, this one. And now the game is effectively over because there's no risk of me losing this co anymore. But I was quite low on time. So I, there's still some risk I might time out here. So I think what I should have done is I should have just like connected here and like let black have anything. I'm still winning by like eight points here, uh, which I knew of course, like it's not like I had to count. I, I knew that I was that it was a draw before and now I got a bunch of extra free stuff. So I knew I was winning. Should have just ended the game as quickly as possible. But for some reason I was stubborn to fight this co, um, which is a little bit dangerous because you know, now for instance, I stopped for a second here and was like, oh, do I need to respond to this co threat? I don't know. Um, Again here, I was like, oh, but this is not a code threat, right? And then I realized, oh, I actually have one more code threat, so I can just respond to it, that I don't have to think. But all the time I'm like on my last second, it's pretty dangerous. Um, but after this final code threat, white is actually winning the code, and now uh, at this time, black resigned. So not really the cleanest uh, finish there, but um, the reason I'm really proud of the game is just this initial sequence here which I wasn't so sure about in the game. I thought, okay, I'm just barely hanging on here. But when reviewing the game, it turns out this was the um, AI sequence all along. And um, yeah, and white is actually better afterwards. Hope you like this game. See you in the next video.